Hey guys, today we're going to work on a nebula. Since it's nebula season, let's go ahead and shoot the most famous pinwheel galaxy, the M101. I'm John Robinson, the Astrotard. This is Deep Sky. This particular target is, is 22 hours of data that I have captured over, I don't know, six or seven different sessions over the last year or so. So I have data from 2019 and 20, from 2020, and it's a mixed bag of, you know, 10 minute and five minute and two minute and one minute exposures using different filters of all different kinds. So it's, uh, it's really is a Heinz 57 mixture. Uh, for this nebula, but but the data is pretty strong, as you'll see in a minute. It is 22 hours and it's 288 subs. So let's get into it. Well, there you have it. Okay, why don't we have a quick look at the progress of the sequence of M101. So I've got the Astro Lab, Astro PC rather, running in the kitchen and I'm remote desktop into it. I'm recording the screen of the remote desktop here. So I'm capturing loom files. I've, I've got five minute exposures going, 16 out of 40, and 10 minute exposures on RGB. These are the new Astrodon filters. And uh, I've got a good amount of data there. And I'll be adding to some older data that I've already captured. So I want to get 40 of these uh, with the new Astrodon filters to combine with the older data. And let's just have a quick look. So here we've got the, what is, one is this? This one is a green. This was the last green run for a 10 minute exposure. Let's have a look at the red. Here's the red. And uh, this is probably a blue here. So it's looking pretty good. I uh, like it. Let's check out the guiding. So guiding is pretty strong tonight. So I'm running it around 0.79, I guess. That's okay. And uh, found a good star. Maybe it's a little bit too saturated, but mostly it's okay. So far, so good. Well, it's 3 a.m. in the morning, according to the uh, Astro Laptop. Let's go outside and check the progress here of the rig. And you can see here that uh, it's almost ready for a meridian flip. And I'm pulling it almost straight up and down. M101 is just right up there. Looking good. All said and done, after one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sessions, 288 subs. 79,500 seconds or 22 hours of of data. So this should be a pretty crisp image if, if it all looks okay. And the thing that you'll notice here is some of the ex exposures are 10 minutes, some are five, some of them are one minute, some of them are two minutes. So I'm kind of all over the map here. And uh, I definitely shot RGB with uh, ZWO as well as Astrodon. And the loom filter was various different loom filters and the, even the H filter was different. Uh, so it's a combination of lots of filters. It's not a very consistent image but it's lots of data and so we're gonna go for it. So here's how the red turned out. Uh, the red is, uh, I don't know, one-fourth of the data so I don't know, maybe it's uh, 50 subs or so in the red. It's pretty strong Here's the green, came through pretty good. Red and green both look pretty good. Here's the blue that came through, very strong in all three. So we're looking good there, red, green, and blue. And then here's the uh, 
loom data, very strong loom data as well. And here's the hydrogen alpha data. So not a lot of subs here, and I'm only interested in these little uh, highlights anyway. So no big deal on the H, but it's, it will serve our purposes just fine. So here's, here's the mix of the RGB using pixel math. It came up looking like this. It, it by itself without any processing, you know, it's that it's that traditional bronze color that you expect from a nebula. It looks pretty good, you know, and this is without any post-processing on it whatsoever. So that's pretty good data by itself, but I wasn't content with that. So I took the RGB and I mixed it with the loom data. And because I do have a lot of good detail in this loom data that I wanted to bring out into the RGB. And the way I did that was with this script here, multi-synthesis LRVB. So I chose the, uh, the loom and I chose the RGB mix and I mixed those together. And when I did, it came up with this guy here. So let's compare that to just the RGB. So here we have the RGB before the loom and here it is after the loom. So it, I thought, I felt like the loom added a little bit of more definition and clarity uh, and differentiation there in contrast. So I like that, it's looking pretty good. But I went one step further. So now that I had the loom with the RGB, I wanted next to add this H alpha to it. And all I'm really interested in are these little high, highlights here, these white areas. So the way I grabbed that was I used a similar script. Instead of LRVB, it was HARVB. So I took the H channel here and mixed it with the new LRVB file there. And when I did that, this is what we ended up with. Now this is before stretching or tuning at all. Um, so this, what it has is, represents all of the data and all the 288 subs that I captured over the year for 22 hours. And it really puts them all into one. And I really like how it highlights, especially in the H-alpha regions, you know, these hot spots out here. Um, you know, it, it changes a bit. It's no longer amber anymore. It's more of sort of a, a cream colored, but we're going to tune that up a little bit. So, so anyway, this was my starting point with everything mixed together. Then from then I did some mixing. So I said, okay, here's my default mix. That's my starting point. And then I separated the nebula from the stars using the uh, StarNet tool. And that's how I separated the stars out from the nebula. So there's the nebula. Here's the stars. And then when I had the nebula, nebula separated, and then I tweaked it a little bit. So I obviously you can see I'm pulling and pushing on the colors here, bringing out some of the bronze. Also, a lot of people when they shoot this, some of the spiral arms are showing up as blue. And uh, I can see why, because when I started to stretch it, it really, the blue started to show up there. And, uh, and then I did an automatic background extraction on it. And uh, that's kind of how that ended up looking there. And once I had at that point, I added the stars back in, and this is my final image. So let's compare that to the regular RGB by with this other one here. They make those the same size. So what do you guys think? So here's the RGB, and here's the Loom RGB plus HA, and then uh, pushing and pulling on those colors a bit. So this is what I'm going to call the final image there. I like the details that, that came up and looked in that, showed up in that nebula there. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the result. Let me know what you guys think. Well guys, that's it for this week. Uh, let me know any, in the comments section what you thought about the M101 and any te techniques or tips that you might have or might have done differently. And uh, stay safe out there and uh, clear skies to you. We'll see you next week.